After UCF began the Conference USA schedule at 0-2, the guy sitting next to me said, we now have a six-game conference series. We need to go win them. And they did. All of them capping it with a 34-27 win at UAB on Saturday. UCF finishes the season at 8-4, and four, now heading to a bowl game for the third time in five years. And hello again, UCF fans. Welcome to UCF Sports Today with George O'Leary. That's the coach. I'm Pat Clark. Happy that you're here for our final game, well, for our final show of the series. And congratulations, George. You've always said that any road win is a good win. This one falls into that category. Great eight and four finish. Congratulations. Appreciate it. Uh, I tell you, you know, it was a good game for the players. Not everything went well all the time, but I thought they played well. Uh, I tell you what, we had a lot of fans there. A lot of Atlanta people came down, so it was a good turnout from UCF. And, and I know that it was nice to get a win against UAB at any time, but there was probably a little bit of that stench from last year's 15 to nothing loss <laughs> here. I know that those memories kind of die hard, but even last year at this point, you thought your team was getting very, very close, and maybe this proves that you were right back then. Well, I thought last year we had lost some games that you have an opportunity to win, and you know whether it's overtime or within a, a touchdown. But I thought this year the, the key of the season was improvement each week. I, I thought we got started being a lot more consistent offensively, defensively, and special teams. And again, you credit the assistant coaches. The I think one is that. The kids took coaching, and obviously when you win, you have a good senior class. Joe Webb is a star for Alabama <laughs> Birmingham, and I know that you uh, had before and still do now have a lot of respect for him. Uh, he accounts for about 75% of UAB's offense, and he was tough to stop, but you still managed it. He got his yards yesterday, you, but you still overall were able to stop him and the team. Outstanding player. I, I he, he looked good on film, <coughs> and he looked good yesterday. He... Uh, uh, can run, can throw, and uh, he has a great future ahead of himself. He really does. He, you know, when you look at the quarterbacks that we have faced, uh, boy, he's right up there with them, no question about that. All right, at eight and four, finish six consecutive Conference USA victories to end the season. Now, the Knights aren't going to play in the Conference USA championship game, but they are indeed, as mentioned, going bowling. And we'll talk a little bit about that, take a look back at the UAB game when we come back on UCF Sports Today with George O'Leary. So stay right there. UCF Sports Today with head coach George O'Leary is brought to you by Holler Classic, the official automotive group of the UCF Knights. Buy smart, be happy. Today's show is also presented in part by Bright House Networks. See how bright life can be. And Coca-Cola. Welcome to the Coke side of life. UCF football is heading back to a bowl game. Ticket orders are now being taken at UCFBowl.com or by calling the UCF Athletics Ticket Office at 407-823-1000. Don't miss out on this historic event. Armor up, Knights. It's bowl time. Welcome back, everybody, to UCF Sports Today with George O'Leary in the wake of UCF's uh, impressive 34-27 win at Alabama-Birmingham on Saturday afternoon. Brett Hodges had a, another good day, 24 of 38 for 230 yards. He had a couple of touchdowns, George, but he also had a couple of picks on the soft coverage. Talk about his evolution throughout the course of the season. I know you're very, very pleased with that. Well, I really am. I, I think the big thing that he brought to the table was his fieldmanship, his poise, and really he, he took advantage of weaknesses in coverage, and he didn't try to get things that weren't there. And again, he uh, you know, very pleased with how he handled things, how he managed the game, and uh, you know, he's the conference has a newcomer of the year award, and I uh, put him up for it. Hopefully, he gets it because he sure deserves it. Well, unfortunately for UCF, he's not going to be back next year. But he found ten different receivers during the course of the game, and you have a number of these. In fact, most of them are coming back next year, and I know that you love to see a ball dispersed the way he dispersed it yesterday. Actually, if you count in UAB, you found 12 receivers. Really? <laughs> oh, <that> <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> we won't talk about that. Let's just talk about the ten, okay? <laughs> I, I, just, just a great job, and you know, I'm so pleased for him and and the way he handled the whole thing, coming in the way he did and taking over. So, again. Great job. That's what I told him yesterday. Uh, Bryn Harvey ran for 130 yards. He needed 53 yards coming into the game in order to get over 1,000. Did that very early on, becoming the eighth UCF player ever to rush for 1,000 yards in a season. You know, at this point last year, George, you kind of had an idea who your running backs of the future might be, but you still weren't certain heading into last year's offseason. Now you know that you not only have Bryn Harvey, but you've got a supporting cast coming back here too next year. Really do. I thought Brennan ran very hard yesterday, made some people miss. Uh, and again, we have a, a, you know, you don't have to run them 40, 30 times a game. You can put in Jonathan Davis and, and Ronnie Weaver. And I think they all have certain things they bring to the game and it helps us move the chains, which is the most important thing. All right, coach, let's head up to Legion Field in Birmingham, where by the way, UCF has been very successful, four and oh, all time at Legion Field now six and one against Alabama Birmingham. This is your first drive coach Brent Harvey with a catch on uh, the first drive for a 19 yard gain. Yes. Good vision waited out. Nice play. And here's the touchdown on that. And this is a beautifully placed pass by Brett Hodges. As you can see folks Kamar Aiken catching a 12 yard catch and an early lead. That was a 10 play 64 yard drive. Now we're taking a look at another UCF scoring drive. This is right at the end of the first period, Coach. And talk about threading a needle there to Adam <laughs> I was happy for the young here. You see a lot of boots he's catching stuff, but nice catch and a good run after the catch. Okay, and here's A.J. Guyton on a great crossing route. This is a 17-yard play, and this actually came on a third and long, which would keep the UCF drive alive with a big first down. And then Billy Giovanetti uh, with a five-yard catch for a touchdown, his first touchdown at UCF and it's 17 to 7 coach. Uh, a good way to start the game especially when you're playing away. And look at this uh, special teams play on the punt return. Here's AJ looked like he was coming to the near side then reverses field goes to the far side. This ultimately would be a 22 yard gain and then the personal the personal foul that's about as blatant as you get with a personal foul. Coach. Well they called it. Indeed they did, and here's Jonathan Davis powering through the, up the gut, 70 yards for a touchdown, and it's 24-14. That was the score uh, at halftime, and it's worth noting that Jonathan Davis not only was doing a great job on the ground, but you know he'd, he'd pick up a nice run, and then you'd score a touchdown, and then on the ensuing kickoff, he'd be the guy getting the tackle. Yeah, for a freshman, I, I really think he has, like a lot of the freshmen that we play this year, I think they have a great future out of them. Okay, what was the message at halftime then? It was 24-14. Well, to 14. Were you feeling good about the team? Because Webb was still getting his yards, and I know in yeah. some ways he was confusing him, but you were confusing UAB as well. Well, I thought offensively, I, I thought one is we had to still sustain some blocks and finish. I, I think those that was the message to offense. And defensively, we were out of sync, I thought, and uh I thought Coach Huxley did a good job of, of trying to get him back online as far as, you know, I thought Webb's runs and stuff, too many guys were standing around watching instead of closing to make a play. And again, we lost some coverage that you can't do as far as, you know, letting guys get behind you or losing them in a, a plaster situation and scramble. So again, those corrections were made, went out the second half. and. Uh, I can give UAB credit. I think the quarterback made plays, and but again, we hung in there and we scored points, and we left some on the table too that we would like to have back. But uh, I think it was a good win, and uh, as I told him after the game, uh, you know, eight and four season, and you like to have a couple of games back, but you know, it don't work that way. But right now, uh, let's wait and see where we're heading. I know that you've taken great pride in controlling the pace of play throughout much of the most of the second half of the season. Uh, no change in that on Saturday, effectively 33 minutes to 27 for them. But the first period was largely in favor of UCF. You had the ball for 11 and a half of the 15 minutes in the first right. period, Coach. We really did. And uh, again, we had long drives, eating the clock up. And that wears on a team, especially when you're playing away uh, as far as a home team there. And I think they came out with a quick score and <laughs> threw it over. So again, they, it was 7-7 seven, seven there. And uh, we worked hard to get our seven. They got it pretty quick. And again, I think, uh, as I said earlier, I thought Webb played an outstanding game. I told him that after the game. I, I said, you're a heck of a football player. So. Mm -hmm. Indeed he is. All right, now off to the second half highlights. UAB got the ball first, so a score, you know, makes it a three-point game. But that's not ha what happened at all. Here's Josh Robinson stepping up for his sixth 
pick of the year. Remember, folks, this is a true freshman, and not only that, after the pick, you see picking up some yards here, Coach. I know he, you like that. He really did. I, I think he, you know, basically had a good game, got a couple of penalties on that play, and uh, again, nice pick. Josh's interception will ultimately lead to a Bryn Harvey touchdown. That's our play of the game, so you'll see that in a moment. There was a Jarvis Gathers uh, sack, and here's Bruce Miller with one of his two sacks on the day. Yeah. Again, uh, uh, good good rush guys, good sack guys, a great second effort, and Bruce sure is that. Well, we like watching Jonathan Davis run. You saw him with a score in the first half, and here's a beautiful 45-yard run, and this kid... Uh, Talk about maturity for a young player. He's showing it, isn't he? He really did. I, I think, you know, when uh, I said at the beginning of the season that he was one that just had to mature a little bit, and he sure has. Okay, that run would help get UCF into field goal range. Here's Nick Katoy with a 36-yard field goal. It's his second field goal of the game, and UCF was up at the time 34-21. to 21. And here comes a big stop on a fourth down, and again, it's Josh Robinson, Johnny, on the spot, and that stopped the drive dead cold. It really did. Great close on the ball and good tackle. And this is late in the game, an onside kick attempt by UAB, but Ronnie Weaver is Johnny on the spot, and uh, the Knights hold on to win this one 34-27. You have to be very proud with the way the kids have played this season, Coach, and I know that you like it too when you don't have to worry about anything that's going on off the field. This has been a, a very disciplined team, and I know all credit in your eyes goes to your senior class in that respect. Oh, I, I think every year I've coached, I always look back at the senior class. They may not have been the best players, but I think collectively <laughs> that's where your leadership comes from. And this class had some of the better players that also were the, the better leaders too. And, you know, it got to the point they've been through the program for five, some six years yeah. now. So they, they knew what the expectations were in all facets, you know, whether academics, social life, whatever it be. And they kept charge of these young freshmen and young players that sometimes wander a little bit. <laughs> but disciplined on the f off the field and disciplined on the field as well. And you can gauge that sometimes by how penalized your team is. Yeah. And there may not be many fans out there who know that UCF is second in the nation in being penalized the least amount, only behind Navy and just one penalty on Saturday. That was a, a pass interference penalty for 15 yards. So as a coach and as a coaching staff, you have to be proud of that too, that they, ha they have that discipline on the field. They really are. I, I tell you, they, they did a great job that way. And, and that's a lot of hidden yards that you save that, you know, people don't look at for penalties. And uh, Again, I'd even question that interference call, I think, a little bit there. But I think great job. We bring that up each and every week about penalties. All right, we're going to take another break. When we come back, we're going behind the scenes with Robert Jones and his equipment team at UCF. And later on, I know you folks have been waiting for this. Where is UCF going bowling? We'll talk with the coach about that, too, when we come back on UCF Sports Today with George O'Leary. The Knights Kids Club, presented by Chick-fil-A, is an exciting new club just for kids 8th grade and under. Call 407-823-6165 or log on to UCFAthletics.com to join now. Greatness doesn't care how early it is or how late. Greatness doesn't care if anyone's watching. Greatness doesn't care about your clothes, your hair, or your music. The only thing greatness cares about is getting an opportunity. Where will you get yours? At UCF, we believe no dream is too big and no goal out of reach. On the fields, the courts, and in the classrooms, UCF stands for opportunity. Here's Harvey inside the 20. He's to the 15. He's to the 10. He's gone. Touchdown, Brent Harvey. 25 yards out. He's in the end zone. And the Knights take a 30 to 14 lead. Boy, what a great job by the line to spread it out. It's become status quo for Brent Harvey. Another great day. 130 yards on the ground, going over 1,000 yards. For the season that touchdown set up by a Josh Robinson interception. Welcome back to UCF Sports Today with George O'Leary. We've talked before on this program, George, about your support staff. Uh, Robert Jones, your equipment manager, is almost like a, a, a right arm for you because he does so much of 
the, the leg work for you and his student managers as well, and I know you're very proud of him. I tell you, all support staff do a great job behind the scenes, and they, they, they have great responsibility. They're accountable to the people that they employ, and uh, again, Robert's one of the big ones. I, I think whatever's, uh, he starts on Wednesdays and wow. gets everything going, and you know, what we wear, he's responsible for, and and what's on the field he's responsible for. He has a big job and does a great, great job. Let's take a look behind the scenes with Robert and his staff. The main job of what the equipment department is all about is to be a service to the athletes and to the coaches. To make sure we're there to service them, to give them what they need to be successful on the field as well as off the field. There is a misconception among what equipment people actually do. You know, they've been labeled for so many years as they're the towel and the water boy. But without the student managers or the equipment, you know, the game basically wouldn't be around. Uh, steering practice and things of that nature, the student managers actually control a lot of the practice because they have to have the balls where they're supposed to be, they spot the drills. We have a manager in the tower that actually watches Coach O'Leary every, his every move and knows when to blow it, when to change the period, what field we're going to, what segment we're in, and things of that nature. And we run 40 second clocks for play clocks also. But uh, on the outside of that, we're not just a laundry and a towel boy or water boy because everything that these athletes wear, and everything that the coaches wear, we supply it. We also make sure that it's maintained and kept up to date because every time an athlete hits that field, his liability lies within our department. Being an equipment person, you, you take pride in a lot of different things, but probably the most important thing we take pride in is how we look on game day because that's the perception of how we look to the nation and how we're dressed and how we per everyone perceives us as a university, as a football team, that's very important to us. The common things that we, common problems we could possibly run into during practice if we get out, we have no electricity. We need that for the clocks. The clocks doesn't work. The rain, if it comes, because we move from the outside to the inside, we have to be ready to go because we're not going to miss a beat. The coach is not going to wait on us, so we have to be ready to go. And coach O'Leary requires a lot of each person that works in his department, but what he expects a lot of the equipment is to follow direction, work hard, be on time, and be, keep your ears and your eyes open and be ready for any kind of situation because change of, change of direction in anything will either make us or break us. We're very lucky to, to have some student managers that come to us to discuss some athletic ability. You know, every now and then we don't. How they learn what they're supposed to do in the drills is basically it's hands-on. I think we do very well in servicing our athletes and making sure that they have the right equipment at the right time, at the right moment, to be the best that they can be. As you might surmise, an enormous amount of work, an enormous responsibility. You've had a lot of equipment managers during your many years as a coach. I know you think Robert ranks right up there. At oh, the top. there's no question he's the top. I mean, very, very. Um, responsibility-wise in charge of what's going on and and very informed I think besides ordering equipment up keeping us up to date on new equipment out uh, just does a great job and you know he has 10 guys 12 managers with him on just for football alone that are on the field that really it's nice to see them develop through the years to where they be freshmen where they're looking all over to a senior where they have it down pretty good all right let's get back to the game just for a moment coach because in the aftermath of the victory, <clears throat> your players were, of course, happy about it, but you didn't see that level of elation that you might have previously gotten. And I'm saying that because I'm getting the sense now that when your players go on the field, they expect to win. So winning at Alabama Birmingham was not a surprise. It was a destination for them. Are you getting that as a coach? Well, <clears throat> I, I thought that uh, basically, they knew we could have played better in some areas and some spots, and and probably I, I think expectations are higher, and I think that's great. That's where it should be. And uh, but again, they they were more I think uh, waiting on where we were going to head for a game, where we we're going to head for a bowl game, and again glad to get a win on the road because we were six and one at home and one and three away, and that's something that you got to look at what we're doing in away games and. It could be the people that were playing away, too, at the time. But I think that was the second road win, and that's big. So where are the Knights going to go bowling? We don't know yet, but the coach has a favorite, and he'll tell you when we come back on UCF Sports Today with George O'Leary. Be sure to visit Buffalo Wild Wings in Waterford Lakes every Thursday night from 7 to 8 p.m. during the season to hear the George O'Leary Radio Call-In Show.
When JetBlue chose Orlando for its new flight training center, the presence of UCF strongly influenced their decision. The results? An investment of $160 million and 150 new jobs. UCF stands for opportunity. Fans, here are your run for Ronald totals for the game. UCF had 435 yards of offense and four touchdowns for a total donation to the Ronald McDonald House of $835. McDonald's, I'm loving it. Welcome back, everybody, to UCF Sports Today with George O'Leary. In previous years, Conference USA hasn't really doled out its bowl invitations until after the conference championship game is played. That's coming up this Saturday. You don't really want to wait that long. You don't really believe that you're going to have to, George. It seems to be three bowls that are now in the pecking order for UCF, uh, Washington, D.C., New Orleans, and St. Petersburg. Your favorite. Where do you think you're going to go bowling? Well, I, I think if you look at the whole scheme of things, it's obvious. I, I think from a standpoint of being in Florida, our fan base, our players, uh, the timing of it. Uh, you, know, I, you know, I hope St. Pete extends us an invitation. I think that's, uh, that to me makes sense. It really does. But... Wherever we end up going, I think it's a decision made, and uh, we'll be bowling. But I think from an overall standpoint, uh, obviously I know the players are looking at that one too, and hopefully they can make a, a decision, and it's the right decision for our, our football team, the UCF, and, and our fan base, which would be staying in the state of Florida. Yeah, and that game, if you were to go to St. Pete, will be played on December 19th, which means, Coach, you've got a pretty quick turnaround. I mean, right. if, if you're going to St. Pete, you need to find out fairly soon because you have to deal with finals coming up. I know you're giving the kids the week off. You're planning on going to a children's hospital this week, so you've got a lot of things going on here. Right, we, have, we start finals the 8th to the 14th. This week, their players are off a couple of days. We are going Tuesday over to the children's hospital, and uh, I think that's always something I like to do and let, let the t football team see the other side of what's going on. And... Uh, but again, it's uh, it'll come quick when we, we do who your opponent is and getting scouting reports done. There's a lot that goes into it and stuff, and hopefully that the conference makes a decision sometime today or early in the week. I've enjoyed this, Coach. Congratulations on a fine season, and good luck in your bowl game. Wherever Appreciate it. All right, okay. that's George O'Leary. We want to thank you folks for joining us this season as well and hope that you make plans to join us next season for a new year of UCF Sports Today with George O'Leary. So until then, for the coach and everyone at UCF and ISP, I'm Pat Clark. So long, everybody. UCF Sports Today with head coach George O'Leary is brought to you by Holler Classic, the official automotive group of the UCF Knights. Buy smart, be happy. Today's show was also presented in part by Budweiser, the perfect balance of flavor and refreshment. Open up a world of taste. By the energy-saving conservation programs of Tico People's Gas. Syntex Homes. For a better way to a better home, visit Syntex.com. Thank <laughs> you.